as the problem states, find the values of a and b, so the function f of x, uh, I've retyped it and put that there, uh, it's the same equation, uh, has a local extreme value of 1 at x equals 3. And then further, is this value a local minimum or a local maximum? So all of the uh, points of that will be further discussed. I just wanted to show a few different combinations of what this graph could uh, take on. If, say, a was 2 and b was 1, it could look like this. Or it could look like this if our solution ends up being 1 and negative 3 for a and b, respectively. Or if, the, if they were both negative, this is what their solution could be as well. I'm not saying that any of these are the actual solution. I'm just showing as you change the values of a and b, like this middle portion now no longer even graphs because I've set a and b too high while these other ones still had solutions within that realm. This is just to show you the application. We will further describe what local extremes are and such uh, in the following slides. So whenever it says to have a local extreme um, of one at x equals three, that is basically saying, if I plug in three here, whatever a and b are, they are to be set up so that whenever you plug in x equals three, you will output one. So following further with that means that we will, uh, following that further means that we'll get to the first equation of three a plus b equals eight. This is the first equation uh, that you'll that you'll need so that we can actually solve the values of a and b. Next, we needed to figure out the derivative of this function, which is going to require a quotient rule. The method that I have been taught, um, at least the saying for it, is bottom times the derivative of the times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom divided by the bottom squared. It's basically whenever anytime I say top or bottom, it is top or bottom of this old prior equation because those are both uh, what uh, what would be called differentiable functions. So bottom function times top derivative of top function of the ratio from before, and so on and so forth. Uh, taking those and simplifying each consecutive step, uh, combining any type of like terms that you can find, and you will come to the most simplified equation here. So as stated before, at, for this to be a local extreme, it's going to mean that the slope at this point is going to be equal to zero. Mathematically, whenever f prime of whatever value, ours is three, is going to be equal to zero. So you plug in three everywhere that you can, simplify as much as possible. There is a negative on there. I did, I did want to make note that there is negative out on the front of that. I've had to redo this solution multiple times because I keep forgetting that negative. That negative is also down here as well. Uh, you can, whenever simplifying, you can multiply that basically to the other, or divide it to the other side because it gets sucked into the zero. And you get your second equation that 5a plus 3b is equal to zero. It is our second equation to do with to solve for a and b. So those are the two equations. And there are many solution methods that can be taken to actually get those numerical answers here of a equaling 6 and b equaling negative 10. So there is the form where you could rearrange the first equation into b equals 8 minus 3a, taking 3a, 3a away from both sides of the first equation, plugging in for the second equation, and simplifying down step by step by step further, getting a equal to 6 and b equal to negative 10. If you have been taught the practice, you can also do matrix form. You can pause the video if you need to, if you'd like to look at that of what's going on there. That picture is wrong. That is not supposed to be divided by 6. That is supposed to be divided by 4. I thought I put the correct version in there. This is, that's, if that is beyond the scope of what you have been taught, don't use it. So. Again, this is only for your benefit if you'd like to use it. So the solution is technically, is the first part of it is technically done because you got A and B's values. What is next is to figure out if it is a local maximum extreme or a local minimum extreme, as stated by the definitions here, is that the local maximum extreme is that the graph should be at a point of downward concavity, meaning any point that is on each side of your maximum is going to be at a lower height than the maximum which makes sense if it's a max, it should be a max. Granted, this is local max, this is not global max. 
And mathematically, that is the double derivative at that critical value is going to be less than zero, basically saying it is negative. So the double derivative is negative. And vice versa for local minimum, any point beside it is going to end up being higher than the max or higher than the min. And we'll have an upward concavity stated mathematically. The double derivative is going to be positive or greater than zero. So again, this is a quotient rule to go by. Uh, taking the steps to simplify. And also then, since we had the values of 6 and negative 10 for A and B for before, you can simplify double derivative and find out it is a negative value, meaning it is the first one, the local maximum extreme, answering the second part of your, part of your question. I also decided to graph them and show that the blue graph is the original f of x function. The derivative function is the green function, showing that it does cross through, that it is through zero, and does slope out there to zero, and that the double derivative of the pink curve also goes uh, to a negative value to show the downward concavity and the local maximum extreme. I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, you can message me on this site. Otherwise, have a good night.